All right, this is the week six press conference with defensive coordinator inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon prior to facing Oregon State. We'll go ahead and get questions started with Emmanuel from the Daily Cal. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Hey, good morning, coach. I wanted to ask you about DJ Uwe Ungalele and how you're kind of game planning for what is a very electric quarterback in the Pac-12. Well, I mean, game plan for him, but uh, really the the offense uh, has continued to uh, uh, do a great job of of uh, using their personnel, uh, really uh, utilizing the quarterback uh, position. I think they're running the quarterback uh, a little bit more this year on some design runs, uh, but he's a, a high quality, very talented player, uh, can make all the throws. Uh, but I think I think uh, you know when I look at Oregon State, yeah, he's a very talented player in the quarterback position. Uh, you know, is going to be the engine of all that, but they do a really nice job of, of spreading the ball around, uh, running the ball effectively in different personnel groupings. So we have uh, we have our hands full. All right, next question will go to Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. Peter, we were talking earlier with Justin about Caleb Bielarms, or can you just talk about his evolution and when and when you worked with him in the spring and and in fall camp, what were the things he needed to improve on, and what are you most pleased with? Uh, and he's become very productive, obviously. He's made tremendous strides, Jeff. He's, uh, you know, we first got here, I think we've kind of talked about uh, his background playing on an edge uh, in high school, uh, the COVID year, him uh, playing his, uh, his, I guess, his high school, his senior year in high school and then his spring. Uh, he uh, unfortunately injured his knee. Uh, so when he, when he first got to us in the summer, uh, his first year here, he was, uh, you know, still rehabbing. And then uh, as he uh, as he regained his health, he had opportunities to to kind of get in the weight room and get in the meeting room. And, and when we first put him behind the ball, uh, you know, it looked like he was uh, relatively new to that. But he's put a tremendous amount of work, uh, focus, uh, a lot of determination on on uh, getting more comfortable, uh, understanding the playbook. And he's made great strides uh, since, you know, the conclusion of last fall uh, for what he did in the winter uh, and the improvement that we saw in the spring, he really catapulted himself in a situation that uh, I'm not actually that surprised with his production. He has uh, very, very good tools. He runs well. Uh, you know, as he develops, to the the thing that he can't rush is just getting more experience. And uh, as he gets more experience, and we can refine some of the some of the things that he can see, uh, and some of the decisions I think he make a little bit faster. I think he'll continue to get better. Is he a somewhat different player than your son in terms of how he approaches the game? I, I think I think experience uh, would probably make him, I guess, if, if you want to say a different approach to it. Uh, KJ doesn't have, a, a you know, the years of experience that Jack has. Uh, so he's, you know, he's probably views it from a little uh, a little different perspective. Uh, and, you know, as we as we instruct him and take him through the week, you know, those guys on on different experience spectrums, you know, those guys are, are asked to to take a little more or, or a little bit less based on what their capacity is. But uh, KJ is a, a very, very talented player and, and uh, we're excited that he's, he's uh, having the production and, and he's, um, you know, making the improvement uh, that he is. Thank you. There we go. Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Yeah, Peter. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Steve. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Uh, we've talked in the past about how, you know, the pack, most of the PAC 12 offenses, they spread you out. They're throwing the ball down the field all the time. My first thought is Oregon State is something of a throwback. It isn't necessarily going to throw 45 times and spread you out. That it's, It is kind of more like a traditional 70s, 80s, 90s offense. One, is that true? And if it is, how does that change your approach this week? Well, I don't know if they're uh, 70s, 80s, 90s quite that. Uh, they do a great job of implementing a lot of different personnel groupings. And sometimes when we think of big personnel groupings, uh, we get nostalgic. Uh, you know, we, we reflect on, uh, you know, having multiple tight ends or multiple fullbacks uh, in the game as the, uh, the way it used to be played. Uh, they they kind of, in my mind, they can kind of live in both worlds. Uh, they can go big. They can put... Uh, multiple tight ends on the field. If they want to um, build some 21 personnel, they have the capacity of doing that. Uh, but, you know, a significant part of their game is going to be built out of 11 and, and traditional spread formations. Uh, but I would also say, you know, uh, what to your point, 
is I, I think multiple personnel groupings and multiple formations always make it a challenge for a defensive coordinator on how you're going to package uh, and how you're going to match. Because the more personnel groupings somebody presents, uh, the more contingencies and the more uh, formations you have to account for. And, you know, as, as we look at things, formations are are as important as the play selection uh, when we face an offense, just some from alignment issues, from man or from uh, matchup issues. So uh, the more people they put uh, in different groupings, the, the more challenging it is for us to prepare. Thank you. Our next one will come from Matt Moreno from Rivals. Uh, big Miles Williams got his first start on Saturday, uh, played pretty well against Washington as well. What kind of what did he show you to, to earn that job on Saturday? You know, BMW has has uh, always shown flashes and, you know, sometimes it's been uh, availability for him a little bit, but uh, he has a, a lot of experience, a lot of experience on the on the practice field. And sometimes it's not uh, as much as he'd like on the on the, on the game field, but he's got uh you know, he's got a, a component to his game that he can really help us. Uh, he can play some first, second down run. Uh, you can see him get on an edge uh, and be an, a, an effective pass rusher. So it's been great uh, to get more guys uh, in the game, you know, with Xavier, Miles Jernigan, uh, David Reese, uh, Ryan McCulloch in, in some limited capacities. You know, having five guys to be able to play those edge positions has been uh, huge for us. All right, we'll swing back to Jeff Ferrato. Peter, can you talk about Oregon State's offensive line? I think they've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 110 career starts from those five guys. Uh, two or three of them have more than 30 career starts. Uh, just how big of an asset is that for them? Yeah, I think it's tremendous. I think that's really the the, the engine of the whole whole operation. Uh, they do a very good job of staying attached. Uh, you can tell they're extremely well coached, which – I've probably said every time we face them, uh, you know, since uh, Jonathan's been there and and uh, Coach Mahalachek's been there and Brian has been uh, coordinating. Uh, there's there's really no there's no uh, dents in the in the in the armor. I think they're uh, very effective at what they do, and I think they play to exactly what their uh, strengths are. They're uh, tough. Uh, they do a great job of working together. You know, some of the combinations and, and some of the zone blocking schemes. Uh, it's really, you know, if you wanted to put together some teach tape and and uh, go to clinic, I think uh, Coach Mahalachek must have plenty of teach tape, uh, you know, material for him to go on the road with. Thank you. Next question will come from Thomas Dunn from Hyper, California. Uh, good morning, Peter. With, with the way Oregon State runs their offense in terms of jet sweeps, play actions, you mentioned earlier, 11, 12 personnel, everything that they do just to get people moving in different directions. Is it fair to say that Basically, what the defense sees throughout the course of a particular play is going to be the most crucial as opposed to even before you even get to the things like execution, just in terms of what they see, where the play goes and where they may even be confused at times. Well, I think, you know, a, a lot of those offenses, uh, you know, is window dressing or, you know, different ways of presenting uh, the same play throughout different formations and in, in FIBs or or uh, reduction of splits or motions. I think those things are all, uh, you know, a, a big part of what every offense is going to do. Uh, there is limited time in the day. There's limited opportunity at every program to uh, to have the capacity that sometimes that you see on tape. Uh, you know, the goods, the good programs, they present a lot of different pictures. But when you peel it back a little bit, it's it's a lot of the same uh, staples of run game of throw concepts that you know uh, when when you have a a program that's been doing what they've been doing. This has been an investment for years and years and years. I mean, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of banked reps of development in this style of play, which as the program continues to mature and those players continue to mature, uh, it doesn't they they can present new. Uh, new formations, new alignments, even some new uh, run concepts, throw concepts with with relative ease because of the foundation that the program has. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Michael Jorgensen. Hi, Coach. Uh, one more for you about Caleb Larms or uh, Coach Wilcox credits you with teaching him how to be a linebacker. Uh, can you describe some of the specifics of what that teaching process looks like over time and how it helps build successful relationships with players? Yeah, uh, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, I, I take a, a lot of passion, uh, a lot of pride on instructing uh, inside linebackers. It's something that uh, I feel I have a um, a perspective that a lot of people help me um, in terms of the the college experience, the NFL experience, 
and I've been around some great coaches and, and more importantly, some great players that have given me some feedback. Uh, what we do, uh, in my opinion, with, with young inside linebackers is, is we try to keep things extremely uh, clean with our, our vocabulary. Uh, you know, if you were to come into a meeting room from how we align uh, to the techniques that we use in the run and the pass game, you would hear the same techniques uh, the same vocabulary hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, and what that tries, what we're trying to get accomplished there is, is a, a tremendous foundation of the fundamentals. Um, and at inside linebacker, I think the, the most important thing you can do is instruct a young man where to stand and what to look at. Uh, you know, and that's, that's more than half the battle. Uh, and the formations uh, are so variety and, and, and there's so many variables in that. If we can get a guy to stand where I want him to stand and look at what I want him to look at, uh, that's going to be uh, a, a huge part of, of the battle. And what we've done is I think we've we have uh, continued to refine those instructions. And when you find a, a player that has a, a real desire and a real, uh, you know, burning um, passion for learning it. I think it's, I think we can instruct, and I, I think I can instruct anybody that has a great passion, uh, for football to be able to know what to do. Now you have to have the skills to be able to do it. I'm not, I'm not advocating that I can make somebody go make much tackles, but, uh, the instruction part, uh, I think we've, we've put together a, a really, f uh, solid foundation of instructing linebackers. And we've been fortunate, you know, the Jordan Kanashics of the world, Evan Weaver, Evan Weaver of the world, you know, coin dang was extremely productive here. Uh, Jack has been extremely productive here and now, uh, KJ being ex uh, extremely productive. I think we've done a good job of, of getting those guys prepared. And I think they've all done a nice job of, of reciprocating and, and being a, a willing participant in that journey.